Hello, I want to uh, discuss uh, handling the context and technologies used for DAST. So we have an issue opened up uh, right now, it's scheduled for 13.2. And the idea is to be able to control the technologies that are associated with a ZAP scan. Uh, you can see a screenshot here, I'm gonna walk through how this is set up in ZAP. So this screenshot comes from the ZAP desktop utility. Let's take a look at that. So the way ZAP works is every scan has a context. Uh, if you don't set one up, uh, it comes with a default context. And if you click on context here, you can modify that. Uh, what I wanna focus on here is this technology. So inside technology, the whole list of um, technologies uh, organized by database language, OS, uh, SCM, and uh, web servers. Now this list of technologies is statically defined. Um, it is actually coming from this file here, which is tech.java as part of the ZA proxy. This file does get periodically updated. So for example, there may be new languages that come out or new databases, uh, OSs, uh, SCM, that type of thing. But for the most part, this is a statically um, or hard-coded file. So you can see all the databases that are listed. So this list here is shown up in this interface. When you set up a context by default, everything is gonna be selected. Now, the reason these are important is within the various plugins of Zap, certain plugins or certain scans or certain tests will be run um, if a language is selected. So for example, if you don't have ASP, it's not gonna run ASP type checks against uh, your application or PHP and so on. Uh, I'll show you a quick example here. This is the test SQL injection.java. It's a active scan rule, which means it's gonna try to maliciously attack your website. And without going into the code too much, you can get an idea here. You've got an MS SQL uh, test, a MySQL test, Oracle, et cetera. And you can see what they're looking at is tech.mysql. And so uh, further in the code, what it does is it looks at tech.mysql, and then it compares that to the context. So if MySQL is not checked, that check is not gonna run. Uh, and that's one way of re just, just reducing the amount of checks and, and increasing the speed of your scan, um, and also potentially reducing some false positives because you could be running a MySQL scan against a, a website that doesn't have a MySQL scan, uh, MySQL database, uh, and getting some, some messages that it thinks there's a vulnerability in MySQL, and, and that's just not the case. So ultimately, you want to deactivate any of these that are not applicable to a particular website. Now, one of the goals for DAST is to allow users to do this uh, either programmatically, um, you know, by sending that data into, into DAST or perhaps uh, through a web interface. So I want to show you the API and how that's set up here. So within Zap, you can come up here to Tools, Browse API, and it will launch a web browser. Uh, as you can see, it's localhost 8080, so it's actually connecting to this instance here click on local API, and then there's the context here. Um, so the first thing that you can do is, if we wanna look at the uh, technology list, I need my API key. So I get that here. So I've got my API key. So I type this in and it will give me that list. And that's, again, the same list that came over from tech.java but it's just for, uh, sending that to me um, through the API. So here's my technology list, and I can take a look at my context. So um, I can do a default policy, uh, default context, which is the only one that's in there by default. And you can see all the information. Now, one of the things that you'll see from this API is there's no technology listed here. And I believe this is actually a bug in Zap, uh, which I'll uh, be filing an issue for shortly. It doesn't tell you what technologies are included or excluded. Now, one of the things I'll do here is if we come over here and look at the technology list, you can see that they're all selected. And what I'm gonna do is exclude a technology. So exclude context technology. And we're gonna do the default policy. And we're gonna do language.c. 
before I click on that, we'll just show you right here. So we've got language C and it's checked. And what I'm gonna do is run this and that does not exist. Let's try this one more time. Default context. And let's take a look at maybe I, um, so language dot C. Got lost in my tabs. Like that, see. Okay, so we got, okay, so um, now if we come back here and look at our context, oops, let me grab my API key. My API key. And we're gonna do default context. What I was expecting to see is that it would be excluded and you don't see any mention of the language C excluded from this context. However, if I come over here and click on this default context, you'll see it's unchecked. So clearly the API is working in terms of excluding or including uh, technologies, but in the API um, to output the results, I'm not seeing technologies here. So that's, that's a limitation uh, potentially of, of querying the context here. Uh, we can also go here and we'll do something a little bit more dramatic. We'll exclude all context. So let's plug in our API key and type in default context. Um, and this is, this is not a special name. It, it's, you can see I'm just using the variable. Let me close this out. Um, so we're gonna exclude all of those and we got an okay result. And then if we click on here, these should all be unchecked. And there you go. So if we were to run the scan, any scans that are contingent upon a certain technology being checked, all of those scans will not run. So you'll just get probably a subset of uh, the plugins that are run. And there's a, a couple other values in here that, or a couple other uh, functions that you can use. You can exclude all content uh, technologies. Um, you can include all of them. Uh, and then you can do only certain ones. Now we worked here with the default context, but we may want to set up a new context uh, and that's easy enough to do. Um, you can say new context and let's go ahead and set one up here. And my context is just going to be a demo. And we see we got it returned to context ID. And if we look back here at the interface, you can see it showed up. Now, if we click on this by default, it is going to have all the technologies included. So there, they're all checked. Um, and then of course we could come back here and exclude demo. And let's see, I think, um, let's see what we could exclude. We could do, let's do the web server.iis. So we'll cancel out of that and we'll do WS. IIS, we got a result, and then you can see it's unchecked. There's a couple other things within context. You can list all the uh, contexts that exist. So context list, you just need an API key and it should show us this listing that's occurring. So default context. Um, now, one of the things that, that is interesting, we may potentially uh, want to pass in the context via a file. Um, so over here, you can export the context. You can also import one. So if we want to do the management um, in another system and then just import or export, we could do that. So let's export this and we're going to do um, the API key. We'll do Seth, the, uh, sorry, the context was demo and then we'll do demo.xml. Um, it does it uh, in XML format. Oh, actually, it's saying JSON. Let's, let's see if that's the case. Demo, uh, do it as text file. And it just gives you an okay. Uh, it doesn't tell you where it's stored, but it's gonna be in the default folder, which I've, I've loaded up here. Um, and you can see that's in the library applications for zap context. Uh, ls and we've got demo.txt. So let's take a look at code. 
and load up this. So um, you can see down here um, that here's all the technologies that will get included and here is the technology that gets excluded. So this is a complete list. I do not know what would happen if you included a technology that is not supported. It might be something to test out. So if you said language dot, I don't know, uh, Rust. Um, not sure what would happen. And then same thing with exclude. Most likely it's gonna ignore it, but uh, because of the way this is coded, it's hard coded, it, it's potential that it causes an error, but that, that might be something to play around with, particularly if we're duplicating this list in, a, in another interface. Um, so that's where the text shows up. There's a couple other values uh, in scope and this, which uh, I'll be looking at in a uh, future video. Um, but yeah, that's a, a quick demo. It looks like uh, the two issues, let's go back to the API here. So the two issues was I saved that as an, a JSON uh, and it showed up as an XML. So it didn't seem to, um, actually maybe, let's see. Um, I think the output format is actually for the, um, the subsequent page. It's actually not for the, the file. The file is probably always XML and this output format is the response to this. Uh, let me just double check that real quick. Options, got my API key. So we'll do, X, we'll do uh, XML here, API key, demo, demo two. So I think the file is gonna be XML and now the output for the response to this request is gonna be XML. Okay, yeah, so that's the case. So we're getting an XML response. So this output format is not the output format for um, saving the files. It's, did that on the wrong export content. So demo, demo. Okay, yeah, so a little confusing. This output format is for the API response, not for the, the file that it's saving. Um, but if we do come back to context name, this is the issue. You'll see, again, um, the demo was Context name was demo. And you can see there's nothing related to the technology. So uh, you can't get that information out of the API, it appears, but you can, of course, manipulate it. Uh, you're just doing it kind of blind. Um, 